Hi everyone, in this video we are going to look at some mathematics from this wonderful book, Calculus of Several Variables by Serge Lang. So we're going to um, just take a little snippet of mathematics and we're going to do an example uh, from the book. So it starts here with partial derivatives, which we're, we're not going to get into the partial derivatives in this video. Um, we're just going to go through the uh, first example here. So in this section and the next, we discuss the notion of differentiability for functions of several variables, he says. When we discussed the derivative of functions of one variable, we assumed that such a function was defined on an interval. We shall have to make a similar assumption in the case of several variables, and for this we need to introduce a new notion, right? Because uh, in a single variable, you define things on uh, intervals that were open intervals. So what we're going to do now is define the notion of what we mean by an open set, and then we're going to look at uh, the example below. Let u be a set in the plane. We shall say that u is an open set if the following condition is satisfied. Given a point p in u, so any point p in u, there exists an open disk of radius well, they're calling it D, of radius A greater than zero, which is centered at P, and such that D is contained in U. So D is the disk. So basically, um, yeah, I'll draw a picture in a minute. Well, I can do it now. Let me just show you. So if this is the plane, and U is a set in the plane, let's say this is our set U, say this is U, uh, it's saying that if you take a point P and U, so if there's our point P and U, there has to exist an open disk of radius, an open disk D of radius A, right, and then the radius here is A, it's a terrible picture, uh, such that D is contained in U. So that will fail um, if, if it was like this, and then you pick a point here on the boundary, and then game over, right, so then it's not open. So that's the idea uh, with open sets uh, in the plane. Let's take a look further. Let u be a set in space. We shall say that u is an open set in space if given a point p and u. There exists an open ball b of radius a greater than 0, which is centered at p, such that b is contained in u. Basically, yeah, so for it to be open, um, given any point in the set, you have to find a, a, a ball, an open ball, that's contained in that set. Right? That's the idea. And then it says, a similar definition is given of an open set in n space. Given any point p in an open set, we can go in all directions from p by a small distance and still stay within the open set. Yeah, so you can move uh, an infinitely small amount from, from that point, and you're, you're going to be good. Uh, you know, a small, there's a small enough amount you can move, you know, you, you know some, some epsilon. In the plane, the set consisting of the first quadrant, excluding the x and y axes, x and y axes, is an open set. Let's let's draw that picture so we can so we can see what that looks like. Okay, let's running out of hospice. And let's draw that picture. So it says the plane um, excluding the x-axis and the y-axis, the first quadrant. So here's here's the xy plane. Okay, so there's x, okay, and here's y. And we want to um, just do the first quadrant, so all of this, right? But we want to exclude the x-axis and the y-axis. So we're not going to include the x-axis, right? And we're not going to include the y-axis, right? We're not going to include any of these. So we're just going to look at this set here. And the claim is that um, this, this is an open set. And yeah, it's an open set, right? So this set here is, is an open set. I guess we could write down um, what this set is. We, we could try to. I mean, it didn't say to, but hey, let's, let's, let's be bold, right? So let's see. So it's the set of all ordered pairs x comma y such that. So what does it mean to, to be in this set? Well, I guess it would mean that x is positive, 
right? Because we don't want it to be zero, because we, we, we don't want to include the ordered pair of zero, zero. And we also need and, I, I don't know why my, why my and looks so funny, and y is greater than zero. So we would need both of those conditions. So that, I think that would be that set, right? So yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, and then uh, I'll just delete the video <laughs> if I made a mistake. Uh, but hopefully, that looks, looks good to me, uh, right? Because x, po x is positive and y is positive. So there we go. Um, so that's that set. And it's, it's clearly an open set, right? Because given any point p, like even if I pick a point that's like really close, like if I pick a point p, like, oh, mg, how, how much can I zoom in? Wow, look at that. That's nuts. And then I, you know, I'll be able to find some little open ball around that giant, really fat point that I drew um, that's contained entirely in this set. So this is going to be uh, an open, uh, it's going to be an open set. Uh, so yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, there is another statement in the example that we should look at and we should verify, um, at least with our intuition, or try to. Uh, the x-axis is not open in the plane. It asked in two space. Given a point P on the x-axis, we cannot find an open disk centered at the point and contained in the x-axis. That's true. Let, let, I mean, let's, let's do it. Let's just do it again. So here's. Here's the x-axis, here is the y-axis. Okay, and then Lang's claim, Sir Lang says that uh, the x-axis is not open in the plane, right? Because given a point on the x-axis, so let's pick a point here, um, can we find an open disk centered at that point that's contained in the x-axis? No, you can't move in any amount up or, I mean, you, you, you can only move right, <laughs> right and left. You can't go in any other direction. Uh, to create a ball, it's just not physically possible. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be open. So that's that's one of the reasons. Um, you know, this definition is is just great, and it allows you to do things, right? You need this definition, by the way, um, to define um, the notion of a partial derivative, right? It's because you have a limit process going on. So that's why it's introduced here uh, in this section on partial derivatives and. I'll, I'll make another video maybe some other day or later uh, introducing partial derivatives uh, the way Lang does because it's different and I think that it can give you a different perspective, which is kind of cool. This is a really old book. I've had this book for a very long time. This is one of the first math books that I ever purchased. Um, I've had this for, 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 for a very long time. And um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's some stories behind this book. But yeah, it's one of my, it's one of my favorite books. I'm just going to give it a whiff here. Just, Oh, well, hopefully you enjoyed this content. Hopefully you learned something if you're still watching. Hopefully you learned some math. Uh, hopefully you understood some stuff. And yeah, if you understood anything, it's worth it, right? You learned something. It was, it was worth the eight minutes of your life to watch this video. Um, subscribe if you want to. I also have another channel. It's called The Internet Sourcer. I also have tons of math courses on, on all this stuff, right? Calculus, algebra, advanced calculus, just so many courses. They're on Udemy, uh, but if you get them, please use the links from my website, mathsourcer.com. Because uh, it helps me and I've lowered the prices. So yeah, and this book is awesome. I'll, I'll try to leave a link in the description or somewhere so you can, you can check it out if you um, want to. So yeah, take care.